In this video, I'm gonna talk about how to make great art. If you've been following me from the beginning of the year, you probably wanna be a full-time artist, or you at least wanna start selling your artwork more consistently to earn extra income, or the case may be. With that being said, if you want to sell your artwork, you need to make great art because here's the thing. The minute you start selling your artwork or attempting to sell your artwork, you're doing business. Now, let me make this make sense. The minute you start selling your artwork, you're doing business. At that point, you're technically a business person. Once you become a business person, your artwork becomes your product. With that being said, if your art is your product, no matter how great your marketing may be, what I mean by this is you can follow every single thing I teach in this video. But if your product isn't good, no one is going to purchase it. That simple. So you must have a really phenomenal product to sell, which means our artwork must be phenomenal. By the way, if you don't know who I am, I'm Draw Henry. You probably could see that by the name on this video. And my only goal is to provide as much value as humanly possible. So I'm not gonna waste much time talking about who I am. We're gonna kinda, we're gonna kinda like just get straight into it. So let's talk about it. Now, art is very, very subjective. It's very opinionated. So who's to say like what's good artwork from not good artwork? I don't know. I don't make those rules. However, I truly, truly, truly believe there are just some artworks you cannot deny that is not great. It may not be your taste. It may not be your style of artwork. It, you may not like it, but you cannot deny that it's not great. And how do I describe great artwork? I describe great artwork by artwork that just cannot be ignored. There is some type of wow factor. Like you just have to see it. Like You have to just look at it. And the best way you know an arc is great is when a kid, by kid I mean like six, seven, eight years old, will see the art piece and they're like, oh my God, this is insane, right? Then you're making great art. It's just eye-catching, mouth-watering, attention-grabbing. I run out of, I run out of phrases. <laughs> but we all know those artwork stuff. Like if you don't, I'm gonna put on a screen here a couple artworks that I think are phenomenal. Some artists and works would be like Catherine, show like the screenshots as I say these names. Like Damon Hurst, his um sharks, or even like him cutting some animals in half. They're just insane. So like that, um, or even Damien Hurst, sometimes it's like the butterflies, like real butterflies on cams. I think those are insane. That or you have like Takashi Murakami. A lot of people know Takashi Murakami for his very, very, very detailed large scale um, paintings, which are fantastic, but those on the screen. However, if you ever took the chance to see Takashi Murakami's sculptures, oh my God, they're insane. I'm talking about the ones that are like stacked up in like gold with the different heads and stuff. Put it on the, put it on the screen, Catherine. Another really great artist, it's like, in my opinion, that would be considered like Kahindi Wali. Show Kahindi Wali artwork on the screen. The level of detail, his specific style of brush strokes and his artwork, like it, in my opinion, it, it have this very subtle like airbrush look in his brush strokes and it's just phenomenal. The scale of those pieces are just beautiful. One of my favorites also is like on um, James Jean. Catherine, put one of James Jean pieces. For James Jean, we probably need a video of a close-up showing like the levels to his work because a, a simple picture just won't do it. That's the reality. But I consider all those artworks are just phenomenal. Like if a kid see those pieces, they're gonna be like, holy crap. Like no way a kid can walk past those pieces, right? But what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna talk about how you will keep your style you don't have to work on your skill and how you can still create absolutely phenomenal artwork as a visual artist. So with that being said, let's talk about it. First, I have to give like a little bad story. So back in, this had to be like 2013, when I was in high school, I went to a very, very phenomenal school that changed my life. I grew up in a very dangerous area in New Orleans and this school kind of like pulled me out of that dangerous area. And I spent most of my day, so we just go at like six o'clock every single day, seven o'clock sometimes. And it, it literally changed my life. 
the school is called NOCA, N-O-C-C-A. At the school, I had a seri series of professors in high school. Some of them were like um, Mary Jane, um, Miss um, Ann Schwab, Marcus, Mr. Terry. Um, we had some really, really, um, Miss Michelle. We had some amazing like teachers in every subject, but there was one name, Miss Nikki. She didn't like when, I, when we called her Miss Becker, so Nikki. Now, this art, this lady, professor at the time, taught me a very, very, very creative, unique, and phenomenal strategy to create phenomenal art whenever you wanted to create phenomenal art. And it never left my brain. And I still like think it's the coolest thing ever. And I kind of added to it. And that's when we explained it to you guys. Now, fast forward, because of this strategy and me like taking my art to the next level, it allowed me to get a full scholarship to the Kansas City Art Institute. Once, and by the way, before I even continue, multiple students from this school, and the class is really small, it's a very prestigious school. Multiple students from the school always get not only art scholarships, but like full scholarships. Like a lot of students get a full scholarships from these same taxes I'm about to show you here. But once I went to the own Kansas City Art Institute, I had a professor my freshman year name, my freshman year, that's the only year I went, honestly. But a professor named Mr. Whitaker. Mr. Whitaker then fathered that strategy to make really, really, really phenomenal work. And Mr. Whitaker is absolutely amazing. I don't know if he's still at the school, but like absolutely a character. But I'm going to be summing up like the strategies I learned from them. And I kind of like added to this. And I real I feel like this is the recipe for just phenomenal. Keep us tuned in. All right. So as we're going to kind of get into it. I have my notepad here. Um, in case I forget some of this stuff. So let's talk about it. First thing first. If you're watching this, take notes because it's a game changer. Once again, like any business, anything you do, if you want to sell, like if you want to be in business, you need a phenomenal product. Like product is first. You have to have a phenomenal product. So if you paint and you this white might be the time that you should probably pause painting and actually take notes. Like sit down and actually watch this video and zone it. So let's talk about it. First thing you need is a sketchbook. Your sketchbook should be like I want to say it's called like five five. 5.5 by 8.5. That's his, that's inches. So that's about this size. Right? When I was in school, I had when I was on 5.5 by 8.5. And I think I had when I was 8.5 by 11.5 or 11, which was maybe like this. I had like two. But you must get a sketchbook. Get a sketchbook. If you want to get be fancy smancy, you get like a moleskin. I don't think it's needed. That's just the hype in the art space. Um, but you definitely need to get a sketchbook. Sketchbook with like clear pictures. Like invest in a decent sketchbook. They're like freaking ten dollars or so. You could get one off of Amazon. Like not no, not a notepad with the other with the lines in it, like an actual sketchbook. Once you got your sketchbook, I want you to understand something before we even get into it. This book will be like your fantasy world. Inside this book, you could become whoever you want. Inside this book, there's the only limitations you have is the limitations you set on yourself. There's no limits inside this book. Like you get to write about whatever you want. So it's not just about sketching, but you also can write in this book. Like this is where you get everything in your brain out on paper. You can sketch whatever you want, right? Whatever you want. In this book, you just want to get as possibly creative as possible, as possibly creative as possible. You want to get as creative as you could possibly be. That simple. Like there is once again, no limits. I want you to understand this. This sketchbook should be so free in your to your mind that you don't want to share the sketchbook with nobody like it's it's it gets that real in a sketchbook like in that sketchbook you have like your deepest darkest secrets and you turn those secrets into creations into beautiful pieces but this is some most things in the sketchbook will never ever get to see um light you'll never get to see day but this is going to be your place of creativity right now inside this sketchbook here's what um i guess you could say like Little details that I learned from Miss Nikki coming to place. Not Miss Nikki. Sorry, Miss Nikki. Just Nikki. That I learned. Here's what you want to do. First, I want to teach you how to get creative. Think of it as like a or like a water well or so, right? And a water well, like that's like these little buckets, and it keep going in circles, right? And when a bucket get here, water get put into the bucket. And as it get here, it turn over and dump out the water, then they keep going the same cycle, right? Now, this is what you want. Inside this book, 
you're gonna just when I work in that bucket, that's you throwing out as many ideas as humanly possible. Try to set a goal as a bare minimum for five ideas a day, just five a day. Five ideas a day. That could be like written ideas, quick sketches. No matter, once again, nobody not gonna see inside the sketchbook. So you could like sketch very quickly. Like you could just come up with ideas. Some ideas you probably wanna take a bit farther and add more details to that sketch, right? Some ideas you probably wanna take a bit farther and like create a thumbnail. By the way, a thumbnail is, a, um, I'm gonna draw it on the paper here. A thumbnail is like a small idea of a canvas and you just use it to like block out where everything can be. So, and you will do the exact dimensions of like a canvas. So it's like, this is a thumbnail, right? If you can focus, All right? So that would be a thumbnail. And let's just say I came up with an idea and I just like block it out. I'm just doing this like really quickly, right? And then this would be my thumbnail, right? All right, so this will be considered like a thumbnail. All right, so now I would just basically be able to take this and then put it on actual canvas if I wanted to, right? So in that sketchbook, you get to sketch out as many ideas as you want. If you feel like those ideas are worthy, then you go turn them into thumbnails, then you go lay them out on that sketchbook, and then you go bring them to canvas. But once again, let's stick to the like actual ideas itself. So when you create these ideas in your sketchbook, you want to go for at least five a day. Quick, quick ideas. Some of them you want to push farther. Now, let's just do some simple math here. Now make this all make sense. If you sketch five ideas a day, five, and we don't include weekends, that's 25 ideas a week in a single week. There's four weeks in your average month. So that means there would be 100 new ideas you would come up with every single month, every month. A hundred. You put that into a year, that would be 1,200 ideas you will come up with in a year. I want you to think about this for a second. 1,200 ideas you will come up with in your mind in one year if we don't include weekends. Now, let's go back to the month. In a month, you came up with 100 ideas. Out of those 100 ideas you're going to have, what I want you to then do is just take like the best 10. That's it, 10. That means 90 of those ideas, you're not even going to continue. You're just going to take the absolute best 10 ideas. That's it. With those 10 ideas, you're going to take those ideas farther. What do I mean by this? Okay, I created the 100 that month. Out of those 100, I choose the best 10. Out of those 10, one by one, I take one, I think like, how can I make this sketch, this idea of art piece even better? And then what you want is you want to create five variations of that art piece, right? That idea. Once you create those five variations, you want to choose the absolute best one, right? Now, at this point, here's how crazy it get. You took 10 ideas out of 100. And then out of those 10, you took those even farther by creating another 50. And then out of those 50, you chose the absolute best five. Like, this is insane. That means at this point, out of 150 ideas, you created the top five. I can promise you right now, if you just do this one exercise, you're going to automatically be creating work that's 50 times more better than any visual artist. Because here's what the average visual artist do. An average visual artist sit in their house and say, oh my God, I got an idea. They take that idea, they go maybe sketch it on paper. After they sketch it on paper, then they say, yep, this is what I like, this is what I'm thinking, and they go put it on canvas. So they get one idea, one sketch, put it on canvas. And then next thing you know, that's how you have average art. Average art going on Instagram trying to sell, right? On the flip side, if in that month you create 150 ideas, and you chose the best 10, and then you made those best 10, 10, five times better because you create five variations and you chose the best one. And then you created only the top five out of those 150 total ideas. You will have like phenomenal art. It's that simple. The numbers just weigh out. Like the numbers, there's no way you can't create better artwork if you just stick to those numbers. Like I could really end this video right here.
Luckily for you, we just getting started. So here's what you want to do. Once you um understand that like a rule of thumb as far as those numbers, you want to take it a step further, right? So when you creating these ideas, let's talk about these ideas should look like. These should be a, I, these should be ideas based on like your imagination. This is why you should be writing in your sketchbook. And when I say like this, your place of um exploration, you want to explore, like explore the world, like explore everything about the world. And then I'm gonna tell you how to do this as well. So going to the next point, I'm gonna come back to like exploring. I want you to understand something. There is something called mediums and artwork. Medium is just the materials that you use to create the artwork. That simple. Now, here's the thing. When it comes to mediums, there are two type of mediums. There's your traditional mediums, and there's your untraditional mediums. Traditional is mediums like oil, acrylic, watercolor, um, cotton on canvas, wood panel, paper, graphite. Like it's it's the mediums everybody knows. Untraditional mediums. I'm making this completely up, but this is just some examples. I know some of you are gonna like just steal these examples, like just get creative for yourself. But untraditional mediums may be like when I was in art school, there was an artist named V. And V used to like make these paintings using um coffee. I kid you not, this year, every single YouTube video I recorded, I always had like one little burp. I don't know if it's becoming a thing or what, but stay on track. So we used to create these artworks using coffee. Untraditional means would be like coffee. I'm making this up. Sand, grass. One of my close friends, a guy named Julian, he got a full scholarship to attend the Art Institute, on, which was called Cooper Union at the time, which is 2015. This was the number one um, Art Institute, like probably, an not even probably, in the entire United States. It was called Cooper Union. And he, got a, he didn't only get accepted, but he got a full scholarship. And he used to do these abstract paintings on tarp. Tarp is like that blue paper that go on like the roof of people's house when like the roof getting messed up or rebuilt, right? So like tarp, like anything that's just untraditional, tile, like whatever, marble, it's just untraditional mediums, right? Now, what I want you to think is when you sketch out your ideas and get as creative as possible, you also want to think about what mediums you can start testing. And specifically, start thinking about untraditional mediums. Now, here's what's going to happen. When you're doing this for the first time, your mind is going to instantly go to like the cliche ideas. Cliche ideas are the ones that have been overly used. Like, it's just saturated. Some of these ideas is like burning the paper a little bit or your canvas a little bit. We all seen it. Using gold leaf. We all seen these type of ideas using maybe like string to kind of make it look a little bit 3D. We seen these ideas. Like try to move away from the cliche and try to get like think really outside the box here. All right now, once again, if you create 150 ideas a month and then you also exploring your environment and testing out new ideas, testing out new mediums as far as like what you see around you. And then you're going to start to realize, like, some of these mediums work better than others. And you can actually paint with some of these mediums. You can actually use some of these mediums at the material you paint on. At that point, that's going to set you up. I'm um, sorry, set you apart from our, from basically everybody else. And at that point, you want to become unique. You want to have a unique factor in your work. Right? Now, once again, I got in this video right here. Because, like, if you just apply that, like, 150 ideas, a month, choose the best five, and those will be the ones you'll take the canvas after you revise them. And then you also like doing that with using untraditional mediums, your art could just be off the wall. Like it'll just be in insane, no matter your style. It's just that simple. However, I'm gonna take it a step farther. Now, last, you wanna go bigger. I get asked all the time, like draw it, but do you really have to create bigger? Small artwork is appreciated as well. I think small art could be beautiful. Yes, that is true. Small art can be beautiful, but it's undeniable that it's a, if a work is bigger, it's usually more desirable. It's just that simple. It's seen as more professional. People are willing to spend more on it, and it's more desirable. Someone will always rather hang a larger piece in a house than a smaller piece. It's that simple. If you look at any very successful artist, when I say very successful, I'm talking like multi-millions. Even look at artists that are selling at like some of the biggest auction houses, right? 
like Sotheby's and Christie's. These artists, I'm talking about like current today artists, not artists like the 1800s. These artists are creating big, beautiful pieces. Usually don't get no smaller than like 36 by 48 inches. So ideally, once you start to hone in your style, you're using those untraditional mediums, you want to think about like going bigger with your artwork. If you can go bigger, trust me, it will be better because it'll be more engaging, it'll be more eye-catching. So you want to go bigger. Even like creating videos on Instagram of bigger works, it's just more entertaining to see somebody work on a bigger piece. So if you're not already, work your way towards those like 36 by 40 and larger. My favorite size is um, 48 by 60. Now, a side question I get, which I will I'll touch on really quickly, is like, but Gerard, how the heck am I supposed to ship and sell it? That's going to be expensive. Just because you create it don't necessarily mean you have to be in a rush to sell it. You can create an absolutely phenomenal 48 by 60 piece, which is freaking huge. Just freaking huge. Matter of fact, this, this piece in the background is like a huge piece. I think that's like 72 by 96. You... Since I'm bringing it up by the artist Jonah Allen, huge shout out to Jonah Allen. Check his check his work out whenever you get a chance. Beautiful photography. All right, getting into it. You want to make those bigger pieces, but you don't have to sell them. But because they're going to be more engaging, it's most likely going to draw more people to your work. And even if they can't afford that work, you can always switch them to a print and then sell them on a print that's like 36 by 48 for a premium at like 700 bucks, 800 bucks, right? So, but once again, we're not going to get into sales. We'll talk about sales all the time in other videos. Let's, let's stay on topic. Now, let's sum this all up and make this make sense. Here's the thing. The formula for absolutely phenomenal art is this simple. I have to make sure I'm not saying it correctly. All right. The formula for absolutely phenomenal art is this simple. A unique style. To get a unique style, you need to be throwing a lot of ideas at the wall, which means you need to be creating at minimum 100 ideas a month if you really want to be like one of the best. Like one of the best. Like be like fill up those freaking sketchbooks. You should be going through like five sketchbooks a year if you could. Like that's depending on how bad you want it. And I'm assuming if you hear you want it really bad, right? So a you like a very unique style. And that's how you find your unique style. Plus um untraditional medium so unique style plus untraditional medium plus size equals phenomenal artwork i'm gonna say it again a unique style plus an untraditional medium plus a um a big piece or bigger size usually means phenomenal art if you follow that you will have phenomenal artwork it's that simple that simple you should probably like, I don't know if you can like pin videos on YouTube um, or anything like that, but you should probably like save this video if you could and like review it, watch it often because I'll talk about this all the time. Like if you really want to change your career in 2024, do not be the person that just watch these videos and don't uh, take and don't take no action, right? Don't take no action. Be an action taker. Like in 2024, be an action taker and take action for the entire year. There's going to be a lot of people that's going to watch this video and say, wow, this is amazing. I'm going to do that. You probably started, create 15 ideas, and that's it. You're going to stop. But if you really want to be great, you have to be consistent. So stick to this process because it worked. And then at that point, I always say the business I'm in is helping artists sell art. So I think I'm really good at the marketing. But the reality is there's just some art that's so good, like so freaking good, it don't have to be marketed. Like it's just that good. James Jean work is just that freaking good. With that being said, I hope you found this valuable. Um, I put a link to another video here that I think you should um check out. I forgot what that video is about, but definitely watch it because it's some good stuff. <laughs> and also leave a comment. Let me know some of the stuff you guys want me to go over and talk about. I want to make this channel specific to you so you get as much value as humanly possible. But with that being said, I'll see you on the next video. Peace.